Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, at your divine baptism in the Jordan River, you revealed that you are consubstantial with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Enlighten our minds and our hearts on this day of your great epiphany. Make us holy by the indwelling of your Spirit, and make us worthy to celebrate this festival of lights, so that we may glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the Church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the one Father whose voice came from heaven testifying to his beloved Son, and to the only Son who is worshipped and whose light radiated upon the river, and who accepted the baptism from John, his forerunner, and to the one Holy Spirit who descended and appeared above the head of the Son. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast in all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. The earth rejoices in your epiphany, O Son of God, and the peoples and nations shout for joy on this day of your baptism. You have dawned from the Father and have sanctified baptism for us. O Church of the nations, proclaim the glory of the Son of God, who became man and was baptized for your sake in the Jordan River, and cry out to him. Blessed are you, O Christ, Word of God. You willingly emptied yourself and took the form of man. You gave us a pledge of life in the waters of baptism, making us holy and the heirs of your kingdom. Now, O Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to sanctify us through this great epiphany. Create a new heart within us. Make us newborn children of your Father and pour out forgiveness upon your flock that we may worship and glorify your Father and give thanks to your Holy Spirit forever.
Christ, word of the heavenly Father, you became man for our sake and were baptized in the Jordan River. You became the way and the door that leads us to the Father. Grant us your grace and mercy and accept the fragrance of our incense that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Kadi shanta loho kadi shat khayato loho kadi shat loho yuto mishiho detame men yufana itana St. Paul to the Galatians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, before faith came, we were held in custody under law, confined for the faith that was to be revealed. Consequently, the law was our disciplinarian for Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a disciplinarian, for through faith you are all children of God in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized unto Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free person, there is not male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendant heirs, according to the promise. Praise be to God always.
to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. During this sentence, Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks for the word of the living God. The Apostle John writes, now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And he came to Jesus at night and he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him in reply, Amen, amen, I say to you. No one can see the kingdom of God without first being born again. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man once grown old be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? And Jesus said in reply, Amen, amen, I say to you, No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. So do not be amazed that I have told you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear its voice, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. And so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and he said to him, how can these things happen? Jesus answered and said to him, you are a teacher of Israel and you do not understand these things. Amen, I say to you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly things and you do not believe me, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven, except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man also be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but have life eternal. This is the truth, peace be with you. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. What is the characteristic, the number one characteristic of Beit Marun? Why does the Maronite church even exist? It's not a geographical church. 
Most times we have the Church of Antioch, Church of Jerusalem, Constantinople. They're geographical. And sometimes we don't really stop to think about the fact that of the 20 different, 21 different Catholic churches, this one, the Maronite, is named after a person, named after a man. So that already excludes the idea of a geographical region. Our beloved immigrants who brought this church with them to America were from Lebanon, in southern Lebanon mostly, specifically. But there are Maronites in Aleppo, Damascus, been there well over a millennium, Cyprus. They're not Lebanese, but they're Maronites. Beit Maroon's characteristic is the defense of orthodoxy, the faith. So in the Syrian church, there's a Syrian Orthodox church, there's a Syrian Catholic church, so that when Syria broke communion back in the fifth century with Constantinople and with Rome, Beit Maroon stood in the middle of all the other Syrians, because they were Syrians themselves, geographically and nationally, stood separate by defending the apostolic faith. That characteristic of that organization, so that a couple weeks ago we had a group of the Colby students come during their Jan plan and they were studying immigrants, immigration to America and then specifically after to Maine. So they wanted to come and ogle a bit at this unusual little immigrant testimony in the middle of Waterville, which is as they recognized the gem. And it was a very nice time to be able to speak to them. But what we gave them in a nutshell, of course, historically, is that the Maronite church is a priest, ascetic, that became an ascetic movement, that became Beit Maroon, a monastic movement, that became a church. And how that happens uniquely in its history is because of its defense of the apostolic faith. It is the glory of Beit Maroon. And thousands upon thousands over the centuries have died for that faith, beginning with the slaughtering of 350 of the monks in the beginning around the year 500, which really coalesced at that point the defense of the apostolic faith. And from that point on, there have been martyrs, first against those who wish to have schism, to break up the church, or to break up the unity of the church, or to violate the, the apostolic faith. And then ultimately with, with Islam coming, there's always been this defense of the apostolic faith. The reason why I connect it with this gospel today is this whole thing with Nicodemus. Oftentimes many of us have been like Nicodemus. We're intrigued by the teaching of the apostolic faith. We're intrigued by this rabbi, Jesus of Nazareth. But at the same time, it's a bit embarrassing, especially these days, to live the wholeness of the faith. So we come at night, we kind of ask questions, but we do it a bit in hiding. We do this all the time, at different points in our lives, of course. But Nicodemus, when he comes, our Lord makes it very clear to him, there are two aspects. When he talks about being born once again, he's talking about a renewal. There must be an entire renewal of your life. And he breaks down, he says, unless you be renewed, renovated in your existence. You cannot see the kingdom of God. That's the first thing he says. You can't even touch the question of the faith of what God is revealing, the kingdom of God. And then when Nicodemus looks really confused and says, well, how is this ever going to happen? My poor mother is not going to have me crawl back up into her womb. Can he? This is ridiculous being born again. But of course, our Lord is playing on the ambiguity, which is in the Greek, the ambiguity remains, that the anabatizen means not only being born again, it also means being born from above. So this play goes back and forth. And so what Nicodemus then says is, well, how are you supposed to be born again? And then our Lord clarifies what this renewal is. This renewal is the illumination of the mind. You must be renewed, born again of water and the spirit into the divine mysteries. And so when Nicodemus looks confused, our Lord says, amen. He keeps repeating, amen, amen. Amin, amin. This is an oath. This is the most solemn way that a Jew could speak. 
What I swear to God before God, what I tell you that unless you be born again of water and the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So there are two things. One is the illumination, the Spirit, and the water are the mysteries that God has given us, transforming the person individually, transforming the soul. And that basis, that lineage, if you want, that illumination is passed from generation and generation in the apostolic church, which is why then Beit Marun stands out historically because it's very characteristic, which makes it the house of Marin, is that it has defended that apostolic faith from the beginning. That is our glory. Every single Maronite should know their catechism backwards and forwards and be ready to not only justify and defend, but to be able to explain and unfold the beauty of the apostolic faith before everyone else. That's the characteristic of Beit Marun. It's not genes from the mountains or from the island of Cyprus or any geographical thing. It is the reality of an ancestor who has given us, bequeathed to us this testimony and this tradition. That is a very beautiful thing. And so when we look at the whole foundation of what our Lord is doing, and when we talk about orthodoxy, we can leave with at least explaining some of the words. Orthos in Greek just means straight. Right, your orthopedic shoes to make sure your feet work well. It's just making your foot, your podos, orthos. It's just making sure that things work well. And so orthos is straight or direct. Orthodoxia is the opinion or the idea, the thought, which is straight, it's correct. But there's an ambiguity in the Greek also of orthodoxia. And orthodoxia means both correct opinion, but it also means correct praise the rendering of the worship to God. So orthodoxy has both meanings to it, the orthodoxia. And so it's an important thing for us to look as we begin, Tuesday will be the Feast of St. Ephraim. I make reference in the bulletin to the next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of the fast of Nineveh, the supplication of the Ninevites. It's specific to the Syriac churches. It shifts us from the celebrations of the Epiphany, the last week following the Epiphany. It, in a sense, shifts us towards already our eyes of the next three weeks of the commemoration of the dead and, of course, the great fast. So only the Syriac tradition has this in reference to the preaching of the prophet Jonah to Nineveh and the conversion of the Ninevite people and their fasting. So we have this three-day shift, the Feast of St. Ephraim. So it's a moment for us to consider, you know, what it is that makes us Beit Marun. And when we understand that, this church will always be here because there will always be a community here. If we don't understand that, well, you know, I can go eat corned beef and cabbage and still claim my Irish ancestry with never going to a Latin Catholic church. But when the community is there because it understands why it exists for the defense of that apostolic faith and the explanation and the possession and the honoring of that apostolic faith, we will always be here because there will always be a community around. And that community will know its treasure of what is received from all the ancestors for well over 1,600 years that we will continue and league it to the beginning to, as, a, as a, a legacy towards the future for another 16 centuries. So may St. Marin intercede for us, our great father, whose feast day is coming up in just a few weeks' time, and St. Ephraim, harp of the Holy Spirit, obtain for us that desire not only to be faithful to their tradition, but also in our own personal lives to treasure that apostolic faith which has been bequeathed to us so that we ourselves can not only see the kingdom of God, but enter the kingdom of God and by explaining the beauty of the apostolic faith to others, bring many, many others with us into that beauty of the life of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with through him all things were made. For our sin, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and the Amen. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have an end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of God, who has spoken to the gods. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to your resurrection in the life of the world to come. Amen. We look forward to your resurrection in the life of the world to come. the sheets for the hymn, for the transfer hymn, for the epiphany. Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
continue on to page 876, the Anaphora of St. John Chrysostom, 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we, who have remained in your divine love, be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, on high, hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin. You are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace, accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. O oh Lord, you are adored by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you. With purity and holiness may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you my brothers and sisters forever and with your spirit let us lift up our thoughts our minds and our hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming,
to you, O God, the Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. Be dawn from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us to share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba, Father. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only Son. And comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven the dwelling place of your hidden divinity in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you and through you and with you Implore as your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. 
O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin Murio, Anin Murio, Anin Murio, Nitemo Rojo Hayo Kadisho, Unachenalain Uala Cordobo no Hono. And the body of Christ our God be for us a pledge of the life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that renews, gives us a new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy an eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith. And guide them in peace and in security. We offer for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Shara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the Word of Truth, so that they may spread it faithfully. With justice and holiness, may they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will, and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy church, and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, Strengthen the bishops of the true faith, that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as, as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them. To lead all the faithful into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, mercy. For the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious St. Stephen the Archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, 
we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints. And in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. And rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will. That in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity. And he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, the saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us. That your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you 
to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one holy Father, Father, one holy Son, one holy Spirit. Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your good and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life.
again and again. We thank you, O Lord, for his blood, for giving us your body to eat, the living blood to drink, Father, of all people. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your Spirit. O oh God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the Holy Cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, 
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.